In part A, we are asked to determine the number of electrons that flow past a given cross-section of a wire. We're given two pieces of information, a time interval, which we would call delta t, and then a current, which we can call capital I. Now, if we look to the right, we have an equation here that relates the current and the time interval to the amount of charge that passes that cross-section. And even though we're not looking for charge per se, it, it turns out to be helpful that if we calculate the charge, we could then get the number of electrons. So our goal is to solve this equation for delta Q, the amount of charge. We do this by multiplying both sides of this equation by delta T. The delta T's cancel out on the right-hand side, and then we see that delta T multiplied by the current is equal to the amount of charge. Now for delta T, we are given that quantity in minutes, we're going to have to convert that into seconds. So we'll fill in 10 minutes, but we'll be careful to make a conversion into seconds. We know one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And so we would end up multiplying 10 minutes by 60, essentially. Notice, of course, the minutes will cancel. And then we'll multiply this by the current. The current was given in milliamps. We want it in amps. So you take the 80 milliamps and you multiply the 80 by 10 to the negative 3, and that converts it into amps. So now we'll pick up our calculators here and multiply all these quantities. And we get an amount of charge equal to 48. So delta Q is equal to 48. This will come out in coulombs. It's very straightforward to convert this into the number of electrons because we know that one electron has a magnitude of charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So we'll basically just cancel out the coulombs and then divide the 48 by that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. And when you do that, you will get 3 times 10 to the power of 20, and that will be the number of electrons. So this is the correct answer to part A. In part B, we are asked in what direction do the electrons travel with respect to current? Now for historical reasons that you may want to look into in your textbook or another source, it turns out that the direction of the electron velocity and the current direction are always opposite. So we've drawn an electron with a velocity pointing to the left, and then we've drawn the current flowing in the opposite direction. This is always true that the current and the flow of electrons occur in the opposite direction. So the correct answer to part B of this question will be that the negatively charged electrons move in the direction opposite to the conventional current flow.